Welcome to Beaver Branch Disc Golf Clinic Step 12, The Upshot. In this video, we look at some field work practice to help improve our upshot game. We look at a variety of different lengths and overall just trying to become more accurate and getting that disc into the bullseye, into circle one. Thanks for viewing. Like, share, subscribe. And here's Brian. Greetings. Welcome back to Beaver Branch Disc Golf Clinic. Step 12. The final installment of the year here. And this lesson is going to be on upshots. Okay, upshots. Hopefully by now you've discovered that disc golf is a game of accuracy, not necessarily distance. Distance does help, but being accurate um, will usually help you as long as you can kind of control your head and keep it in the accurate phase. So today's lesson is on um, upshots and just a couple things that I do to work on my upshots. My goal with my upshots is to get it in the bullseye, okay? And as I get further away on my upshots, my goal becomes, can I get it into the circle? So, good example of that right here is getting all of your shots to where you don't have to putt. That is gonna be the goal of our upshot drills today. So, thank you for tuning in. And we are about to get to work. All right, our first station here, and I sped things up so it's not too many repetitions, but we're throwing hyzer shots from about 100 to 110 feet, which is, I don't know, 30, 35 meters. Um, and just looking to get that edge up and have that very predictable flight. Now we've moved back to probably 180 feet. Same thing, just looking to get the edge up. Very predictable flight on a hyzer flight. And if you're on a wide open course, this is gonna be my upshot. And I'm practicing this with putters. And as we move out, I would move into mid ranges. I think we're at about 220 here just a little bit over 200 feet. Again, just doing muscle memory reps, just throwing the hyzer, edge up, and trying to get in the circle. All on a line right there. All right. So, why practice that hyzer, spike little hyzer shot? for your upshot because it's getting down to the ground and it's a very predictable flight. We know that it's going to be getting down. Um, these shots were all a little bit short, but my coaching point here is if we're using Anheuser or if we're snapping it straight, there could be a possibility of the disc continuing its flight past the basket, okay? So even with a hyzer little chip shot there, you can still put a good run on the basket and not go too far past it. All right, so here we're sitting out at 200 feet exactly. A great upshot length. Um, I'm going to throw the putters, but then I'm also going to start moving up into a mid-range. So in this case, I'm going to go with my favorite upshot disc, which is the gatekeeper. Also similar trajectory is going to be the Emac Truth and I'm going to try to get all of these into circle 1.1 or 1.2. As always guys the goal of field work is to develop muscle memory so that when you get out on the course, you can execute the shot. 
So in this case, we're just doing hyzers with putters, spiking them into the green. And probably, you know, this is like going to be on more of a wide open course. So obviously we're going to have to throw those other types of upshots, but this is an example of how you can get the repetitions in. I will give you guys an example of some other shots that you can do and work those reps as well. Now we're working with uh, mid ranges here. Uh, so if I were to be throwing putters and there is a hard headwind, I would move right up to my stable mid range or even just moving up speed to something like a fuse uh, rather than the putter. Um, just trying to fight the wind more. The the putter is going to become more unstable with the headwind than the mid range. One thing I like to do is put in all of my upshots and that gives me some putting reps. Now it's kind of rapid fire putting reps, but I can still do my, you know, paint the pole or you could focus on the link or what have you, but making sure all of them go into the basket uh, just allows you to also get putting reps in while you're working on your upshots. And since you're inside the 30, three feet, it's not really going to be that different on your, um, from your normal putter, even though you might be putting with a mid range. So here we're looking at setting up a station where we're throwing straight shots, which could be necessary in the trees. Um, and here I'm looking to keep the shot low and not blow past the basket. I'm not looking at running it. I'm looking at saving strokes in my mind. So you could set up a station or two and move back further from here. And then here could be another station. I'm throwing Anheuser shots or left to right shots. And you could do the same thing as we did with the first group of shots. Move these things back anywhere from 30, 40, 50 feet and continue getting those reps in. And you don't want to throw so many reps you want to keep your, your training down to you know half an hour to an hour. This is an example of how when you throw an Anheuser shot, you can kind of blow past the basket. Because as that disc continues on, it's going to want to try to fade out and it can go deep. So one of the answers to that is to throw forehand spikes. So just like you throw the backhand spike... And this is just very common in disc golf. You can develop a forehand spike into the green, which can also help shape shots in the woods if you needed to shape a left to right shot. It takes a little practice and you really want to make sure you get the field work in so that you feel confident that you can execute when you get onto the course. And if you take a look at these shots, all of those forehand shots are much closer to this basket. The two shots that are out there are both the putter shots. So just an example of how that can um, help you save strokes. Other things you can do, situational practice. I like to hide behind my basket here like a tree. And I'm throwing Emac Truce here with a forehand. And you can see I got that over. I get both of them over. And then I have two harps, and I'm looking to make an adjustment on that as I'm doing my field work. I want to get these shots closer than those other two shots were. Always mentally working on my game and my muscle memory and my release. So that first batch was at like 180 feet. This is about 200 to this basket, maybe just inside that. And just, again, looking to practice that step out from behind a tree and try to work these shots so it's not something I haven't seen before. And that's how you want to feel when you get done your field work is that you're confident going into a round of golf, that you've practiced the shots that are important for once you get out there. 
Here's another example. You can set up a station where you do patent pending. Maybe you patent pending out to the left here or patent pending, making an even trickier shot. Get those reps in. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the upshots and the entire series. It's 2021. The next video will be 2022. We hope you followed along from step one. Upshots. The goal is to do field work and really focus on getting your disc into that bullseye. I like to try to land right in front of the basket and minimalize the amounts of putts I have to do. Makes your round so much less stressful. So obviously you want to practice a variety of them. Try to make your upshots fun. I really like to play the game where I just throw, I putt all of my upshots so I'm practicing putting at the same time. That's it for the series. I hope that you guys have enjoyed, learned something. And remember, get out there, get that field work, muscle memory reps, and... May the course be with you. See ya.